Have you wondered how loads are distributed in steel buildings? In this lecture, I will talk about load distribution from top of the building all the way to foundations. This is part one of lecture series. For other parts, please see the link down below. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examined life. Firstly, choice of materials. For building, we have come a long way, especially two materials. They have developed so much that now we have quite a lot of understanding about them. One is concrete, other is steel. Brick is a prehistoric material and concrete has been used since AD 125. Timber has been used quite a lot and iron, glass, steel has been used since mid 19th century and then composite FRP, aluminium, tensile nets and sustainable materials like stone and mud. We will use Euro code 3 to design steel members and typical yield strength is 235 from to 440 Newton per millimeter square but nowadays even just recently S460 means 460 Newton per millimeter square steel has been released. So mm -hmm. these are the typical values and typical ultimate tensile strength. Yield means this point, the one that you see over here. This is this is the yield point, elastic limit, where elastic limit changes to the plastic one. Uh, if you're wondering what is elastic limit, it means that if you apply load on anything and if you remove the load, if it returns to its original position, that is elastic. Beyond that, if there is permanent deformation, we term that limit as plastic limit. So this is FU ultimate limit. And then Young's modulus is 210 kilonewton per millimeter square. And then density is 7850 kilogram per meter cube and the code that we are going to use for steel would be this BSEN 1993. Now this is the most important thing that I want everyone to understand. Load path. In buildings, how do you think loading is, going, is distributed? In buildings, we have slabs which are surface elements which are floors and we have line elements which are beams and we have these vertical uh, lines these are columns and then we have foundations now in here you can see a steel building on your right and then you can see this slab between secondary beams now this is very important to understand that we have this slab and then it has this spanning direction this is arrow now this arrow is only point pointing in one direction. It means that the load is being distributed in this direction only. In the other direction, load is not being distributed. This means it is a one-way slab. So if you just have this one arrow, it, it tells us that this is one-way slab. For example, if I had these two beams, this one and this one, the load, half of the load from the slab is taken on if I call this as beam one, if I call this beam two, beam three, now and four and then five. Now this beam five is taking load from half of the slab and beam four and three and two, they are taking loading half on one side and half on other side. OK, so this is a span of the slab. The load from the slab is being distributed. When we walk on that, it is being distributed on beams. Beams are these line elements from slab to secondary beams. So in other words, I can say that secondary beams are the beams which take load from slab as distributed load. If I draw its diagram, the secondary beam is going to be like this. It will have supports. It will have uniformly distributed load in kilonewton per meter. Then we have primary beams. Now this is very important to understand. The load from slab is being distributed on secondary beams as kilonewton per meter. 
But on this primary beam, the primary beam is this beam. If I call this as beam A, if I call this as beam B, now you can see that the beam A is taking this reaction from secondary beam. So whatever loading is on secondary beam, that is going to be divided equally as reactions. And then it is going to be supported on primary beams. So primary beam is the one which is taking the point loads. Now, if you have a look here closely, now this beam four is resting between the between the columns, and then I have beam three, and I have beam two, and then I have beam one. Beam one and four, they are resting on columns. So if I want to draw the primary beam, B, if I want to draw primary beam B, it will have two point loads. OK, this is B. Now this will take loading from uh, this side and it will take loading from this side. So it will whatever reaction is coming between A and B and beyond B, it will come as reaction on this beam. So primary beam is the one which is taking point loads which means that if you see over here, if you see here, these secondary beams are resting on primary beams. Okay, the fact that we are not taking into account this kind of uh, beam over here because load from this beam, secondary beam is being transferred to the column rather than beam. Can I conclude? that load is transferred from secondary load is transferred from slab to secondary beams from secondary to primary beams and from primary beams to the column and then from column to the foundations now this is the three dimensional diagram if i want to draw its flow plan then it will look like this these are these are secondary beams these i sections that you see here these are columns Flow slab spans between secondary beams. You can see them with the help of these arrows. Secondary beam span between primary beams or columns. One of the secondary beam is resting on the primary beam. So primary beam is the one which is taking load from secondary beam. And that load is as a point load because this is resting on primary beam. So these secondary beams can rest on the column and they can they can rest on the primary beam as well. Now, why do we do it? What is the reason that we introduce these secondary beams? Why not? Why not get rid of this middle beam? The reason is that because when you have longer grids in order to reduce the loading, we need to provide these elements. Otherwise, the load will not be distributed properly. It's just to provide the load path that distributes the load effectively. The primary beams, they span between columns. So secondary beams span between primary beams or columns, but primary beams certainly load from them should go to a column. This is in steel buildings, okay? Load path in steel buildings where we can use primary secondary configuration. Concrete building, there is other story. Concrete buildings, the the slab can be one way or two way. In steel buildings, we use profile sheeting slabs and hollow core slabs, which I will show you in a minute. And they have spanning capability only in one direction. But concrete slabs, they have spanning capability in two directions, which means that they should have a different formula. Now here you can see that ratio of L indicates long side, S indicates short side. So if ratio of long to short side is greater than or equal to two, then it is a one way slab, all right? By one way slab, I mean that the bending is going to be in one direction. The beams in short direction, they are not really taking any loading. So even if we remove them, it will not affect it affect the 
load behavior, but for robustness, for integrity of the structure, we normally provide them, but actually they are not uh, needed. So ratio of long to short side, 100 divided by 2 is 50, which is certainly greater than 2. It's a one-way slab. And ratio of long to short side, so for example, if the if the long side is, say, 4 meter, this is, say, 3 meters, so 4 by 3 will certainly be less than, that would be 1.3. This is a two-way slab. But, but this happens only in reinforced concrete buildings. In steel buildings, we just have spanning capability. We normally use profile sheeting slabs or hollow core slabs. And the, the look at the symbol. This is pointing in one direction, okay? So it's one-way slab. The symbol here is pointing in two direction, X and Y. So this is a two-way slab. If the two-way slab is going in the X and Y direction, um, what yes. way? What way is the um, one-way slab going in? Like, is it X or Y? It depends on the uh, long side. If long side, in in this way, the long side is along the X and span of the slab along Y direction. So if if it doesn't really matter, it depends how you construct it. So if you have a slab like this, then this is going to be your long side and the slab direction, slab will always span on the short direction. 